Minister of Police has resorted to personal insults to counter crime fighter Ian Cameron, who is heading to Parliament for the Opposition Democratic Alliance. Ian is here now. Welcome, Ian. Thank you, Chris. Ian, exactly what did he say to you? Uh, it was it was quite quite concerning because it, to, to many people it seemed like gibberish. But um, Minister Trele responded uh, again. It was very similar to to the previous time. Uh, I spoke at the very end of the the discussion after all the the insults hurled at him from the community. I literally just questioned the fact that investigation work is done so poorly and leadership is so broken in saps that. Um, that you shouldn't come and sit here and tell us about all their successful arrests, but we never see successful convictions. I'm Cameroon. I'm Cameroon. I'm told he's a DA now. No, he's an Afro. He's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's an Afro guy. I know him. Yeah. And he's just, and he's not very bright. He talks, he talks about Tele. He talks about Tele not convicting people. That is magistrate. Those are churches. Those are the guy is not what very bright. Really I'm done. told he's number three in your list as a DA. You are facing a lot of trouble when you have such a person okay, number three. Minister. And his response then um, was not to anyone else in the hall. He then said uh, something like, I am an, a DA, Afro man, something. I'm not completely sure if it was meant to be an insult. I don't. Yo, I'm not 100% sure what his ideas were. But the, the interesting thing is that he then went on to say that if I were a bit bright or I'm not very bright, if I knew better, I would know that his department's not responsible for, for convictions. And boom, he puts his, his foot in it again. He proves to us that he's got no clue about policing. Becky Taylor is completely incompetent. If he was worth anything as a police minister, he would know that without decent investigation and without all the relevant work that is done before you get to a conviction, um, the police plays an absolutely integral role in that. And, and let's use murder as an example. We can talk about detail now. But remember that about eight out of 10 murders in South Africa are not solved. So I actually want to go as far as saying that if you want to kill someone, do it in South Africa because you'll get away with it. Now, Ian, uh, you were not the one hurling insults. Uh, members of the community were. What did, what were they saying to him? It was a, it was a very sad evening, in, in my opinion, because they were, they, apart from the insults, um, it, it was clear that there's a lot of political division amongst these communities, especially communities that are affected by violent crime. And, and that's sad to me because, and, and, and I wanted to say, I tried to say, but I was cut short with time, that in, in that specific community, uh, a lot of the people in the Cape Fats always say, Jochen is my kid, your child is my child. And... And I, I try to convey that, hey, we all, all of our children are at risk of, of having this happen to them. All of us face this horrible danger. Yes, we can differ politically sometimes, but let's, let's agree on one thing. We need to solve this crime issue. So it was sad to see that because, you know, they were fighting with each other often. Um, but then in terms of Minister Trele, when he walked onto the stage, everyone started booing him. They completely disregarded every answer that he gave. And I must say that 90% of the answers that he, that he gave were very poor. It was clear that he was not prepared to, to actually speak in that community. It was very clear that he was, I don't know if he, if he was tired, if he's burnt out, if he's anxious, depressed, what's wrong with him? But psychologically, he, he, looks, he looks tired. Um, and uh, it was almost as though he wasn't completely present. He, he looked like an old man. Um, uh, it, it, and I don't mean in an offensive way. He just looked much, you know, as though it's 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 time to step down, which obviously I think it is time to do. Um, uh, yeah. So so the community was was angry at the rate at which people are killed. You know, Taylor over the weekend told people there that the Cape Flats gets the majority of police resources, um, and he compared it to the rest of the country, and that's utter utter nonsense. You know. The anti-gang unit, let me give you an example in the Cape Flats, um, doesn't have two-way radios. So for the past three weeks, I've been campaigning about this and fighting for them for radios. Last night, I'm informed they received radios, but they only got four radios, and only the commanders are allowed to book out the radio. So that's just one example. So the anti-gang unit now for well, years on end is commanderless, doesn't have a commander. So if it was a priority, they would at least have those resources. The list goes on. The point is just that those were amongst the, the, the issues raised by the community.
And this happened in uh, Hanover Park, where crime is completely out of control. Uh, what is the situation on the ground there? Well, let's let's quantify it. If you go look throughout South Africa at the moment, we've got about thirty, almost thirty one thousand murders per year. If we're going on at the current rate, it's about almost eighty seven murders per day. Um, that is is quite something. This is war zone statistics you're talking about. As I said earlier, only about eight to no, eight yeah, about eight out of ten murders go unsolved. So. That means, you know, according to the Institute for Security Studies, only 14.5% of murders are actually solved. So Fele came on and he said, yo, we've made 188,000 arrests, but he never talks about the convictions. And that's what I explained earlier. Um, and, and you know, if you go look on the ground, and I, I actually wanted to mention names. I'm going to read it to you. I, I wrote a few names. I said to him, I wanted to say to him, I, I literally want the faces of the deceased people I'm going to read to you now to haunt you when you close your eyes. I want to um, want you to, when you close your eyes, see Bokabo Poe's face. Little four-year-old girl murdered in Gating, Mia Bueta, Paul, Siobhan Roche, Akila Schroeder in Delft, Cleo Dika, Kate Dancy, Pukazi Boy in Bukwini, and the list goes on. And I, 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 you know, I wanted to say to him that these are real people. If you look at this community in Hanover Park, these are real human beings facing this. They are not just numbers. And it, it's as though he looks at them as just statistics. He kind of looks lost as though he's in another on another planet. Um, the situation on the ground, and I, I want to approach it from a different angle, is is obviously we know it's bad, but um, it's it's gotten to the point where the shooting is is just constantly going in fact sometimes gangsters shoot literally just discharge pistols in the air just for shooting to intimidate the community to stay off the streets that type of thing they literally own some of these areas and the growth of some of these gangs has just been absolutely horrific to see um and then what we find is as soon as a child gets hurt the police don't dispatch in a way that they go and kick down doors to catch the killer or to find the child. They rather get public order policing to police the community in case the community should start getting, um, you know, I don't know, have some kind of unrest or protest or something. So you know, the, the feeling on the ground is, is, is not good. And, and just in terms of, of the amount of violence is, is terrible. It was also sad for me, so I'm saying a mouthful, but it was also sad for me to see how misinformed a lot of people are. They were hurling insults, for example, at the city of Cape Town, where the city of Cape Town Metro, in my opinion, with very limited mandate to actually fight crime, has literally pushed millions upon millions of rands into operating in these areas. I mean, I spent the entire afternoon before going to that meeting in Hanover Park with the, the Metro Police Gang and Drug Task Team in Manenberg uh, and in Steenburg. And incredible, super professional, well-resourced, vehicles work, they're proud of their uniforms, they have integrity, but they themselves say that they are dependent on SAPs functioning properly because they can do the arrest, but as soon as they hand it over, they don't have investigative powers, so what happens when the docket needs to go to court? So so there's a, there's a mis, misperception about how policing resources works, and, uh, and yeah, it, it makes it difficult, it's a difficult situation. Well, wasn't it in Hanover Park where in 2018 uh, the Minister of Police and President Sora Ramaphosa launched with great fanfare the anti-gang unit, if I could recall correctly? Yes, and uh, they, they, yeah, it was with great fanfare just before an election and, uh, yeah, and, and nothing came of it. I spoke to members of AGU, the anti-gang unit, last night and um, they are literally depressed. They are, they feel depressed. You know, stations are getting new vehicles all over the place, but anti-gang has these old broken vehicles. They don't have resources. They don't know who they can trust. So many of their commanders, or rather not commanders, they don't have a commander at the moment, but their senior officers have been found to be in cahoots with some of the senior and dangerous gangsters. You'd remember at this news conference last year in Drakensberg, I shared the photo of a member of one of the numbers gangs, a hitman for them while posing in an anti-gang police vehicle, showing his gangs, you know. So so it's 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 common knowledge that many of the senior cops are in the pockets of gangsters. Obviously, junior cops some, sometimes too, but, you know, the, the fish rots from the head, and if we don't chop that that snake's head off, it's it's not going to change. Um, 
Yeah, so so uh, there is no political will from national government to to tackle the gang and and Cape Flats violence issue. And it was clear as daylight to me the other night that Minister Becky Taylor is completely removed from reality. When he got there again, whole entourage, I mean, there were hundreds of cops outside. There were public order vehicles, flying squad had to escort him. I think there were five or six uh, flying squad vehicles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the TRT unit was there, provincial units, district, uh, local. It's it's actually embarrassing to see that he has the arrogance and the audacity to come to a, um, a function in a community that ha faces so much bloodshed um, with that kind of protection. So they have nothing, but he can operate like that. It, it just boggles my mind. Now, Ian, what message do you have for him in response to those insults he holded you? So I look to to me, I think he makes a big mistake because he just keeps on adding fuel to the fire for himself. If I were him, I would just uh, either folk well, I would focus on my job and I would I would ignore and not give someone like me the platform because he he keeps on doing that and it's a very silly mistake to make. But, you know, just in terms of the apology that Parliament has told him that he must give me, that he's now appealing um, with the speaker that is not a speaker anymore, um, uh, the irony in it all. Um, so just in terms of that, I don't actually want his apology. I think he should apology, apologize to South Africa. I think Taylor needs to apologize to all the parents that are burying their children. Um, he should apologize to Sergeant Mahoney's family as he was shot uh, yesterday, not because Trele can stop every shooting. That's not what I'm, what I'm saying, but he, his poor management and the fact that he's pushed cater deployment in the, uh, in the South African police service to the point that he has, has, has literally caused bloodshed in police ranks as well. Don't, don't for one minute think, and I often see the comments on social media that the police are this or police are that. I'm the first person to call out the police. But I can, I can vouch for thousands upon thousands of good people that wear that uniform that really do try hard. But they all have become so demotivated because of the leadership issue. And especially with someone like Taylor. Do you know that when cops go to colleges and academies, they are taught that when you stand on parade, you keep quiet. Now Thele goes and stands on a podium and he shouts, um, hello or good morning, um, uh, you know, I'm up, whatever. And he shouts at them. And then when they don't respond, he gets angry and he shouts at them again. Make so he doesn't even understand basic rules and regulations and standing. He doesn't understand how policing works. Completely out of his depth. He's incompetent. I would have sacked him, but at least he should have the decency to just retire, as he can clearly see that he's not worth anything in terms of his leadership of the police ministry. Well, if he survives the election. Um and stays in Parliament, there's bound to be some very interesting debates between the two of you. I don't think he's going to be very happy uh, with you having a say in policy issues. Are you looking forward to that, Ian, or do you not expect to see him in Parliament after the election? I think he will be there in some other capacity. I don't really care if it's him or not. Um, to me, it's it's about the, the fact that a minister needs to do their job and, and whoever needs to be held accountable should be held accountable. So whether it's him or some other uh, incompetent cadre, uh, I, will, I will do what I need to do. Uh, I firmly believe that we shouldn't put these people on pedestals. They are there to serve the people, not the other way around. And Taylor is not doing us a favor. Um, and by showing up, he's doing he's, he's meant to do, do his job. So we need to hold him accountable to that. We pay his salary and he needs to be behave as such. Um, if we if we just go, I mean, I'll give you an example of typical things I'd raise with him. To use Soma Saldana Bay as an example, General Dianti is the current district commander there in, in, on the West Coast. You know that up until now, I think we've spoken about it before, but it's just two years that he's been living uh, in a four-star hotel in Saldana Bay at Saldana Bay at 57 odd thousand rand per month. Um, despite all the complaints, despite the lack of resources in the area, despite the, the, the poor leadership in the area with regards to the police, it just continues. And they say it's an operational decision. Uh, it's the shock. General Mushalogi, we've spoken about her in the Overstrat, Overberg area. Um, zero police experience, absolutely useless. The people that work under her um, are severely frustrated. Um, 
uh, you know, there's a whole list about her. We can go to General Teal, the uh, previous crime intelligence head of the Western Cape. Lost his gun, McQueeny, uh, close to Paul uh, in the Western Cape. And instead of sacking him, he was just transferred um, to, to head office. And ever since, he's been booked off sick. So no one knows what's happening. Um, him and other people um, that I'm told are not necessarily members of the police literally went and they um, they caught the suspects and they beat them to a pulp. And one of them is in a wheelchair now um, to get the gun back. And, and again, the list goes on. So, you know, those are the things we need to talk about because there's this oath of so-called secrecy in the police and no one speaks on behalf of the good people in the police. So to me, it's an opportunity to be able to do that and then obviously represent South Africans being hurt by crime. Thank you. That was Ian Cameron, crime fighter and a member of the Democratic Alliance speaking to Biz News. I'm Chris Stain. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Chris.